8.07 a.m., and we're back, and as promised, we have uh, on the line one, we have Scott uh, Scott Braddock, the editor of the uh, Quorum. Uh, good morning, Scott. Morning, Dave. How are you? Well, you know, I've been better and I've been worse, so I'm about average. Okay, well, when, when, that's, the, uh, when that's the case, I just decide it's no good to complain. <laughs> Uh, or, or at least that no one would want to hear me do it. Anything interesting going on in Austin? Just a little bit of a meltdown. You remember how they were going to fix school finance and they were going to fix your property tax situation? That was absolutely the promise from the yeah. big three earlier in the legislative session. Uh, it didn't they, happen, they, did it? They came together and they was unprecedented, right? That's what the lieutenant governor and the governor and the speaker were telling us, that they were all on the same page and it was all going to work out and this was going to be the year that they were going to fix your property taxes, and guess what? They retreated. Yesterday, they were uh, supposed to debate this in the Texas House of Representatives, and we had heard that the property tax bill was also maybe going to come up for a vote uh, in the Texas Senate. That news was broken on uh, KFYO, Senator Charles Perry talking to Chad Hasty yesterday. And, um, you know, you look at what ended up happening, and it just did not work out. Now, why didn't it work out? You know, we were trying to figure out behind the scenes, why are they not talking about this yet? Well, if you look back to the day before, the governor, speaker, and lieutenant governor kind of surprised the members with this announcement of a tax swap plan. You may have seen this, um, where they said that, uh, look, what they want to do now is uh, pass a one-cent sales tax increase, uh, which, by the way, would put us on par with California for sales taxes, uh, for state sales tax, um, which is probably not a comparison that they appreciate. Uh, but the idea would be to raise sales taxes uh, to buy down property taxes. Well, when they said that, none of the Republican members in the House or Senate had heard that this was coming. It was a complete surprise. Do you all remember more than 10 years ago when Rick Perry and John Sharp uh, did the tax or the uh, franchise tax, uh, the, the swap on that where they were going to put the franchise tax in place, a business tax, to do what? To try to buy down property taxes. Well, of course, you all remember exactly how much property tax relief came from that, right? Well, actually, no. None. Nobody remembers any relief from that. But, but, but there might have been some in the first year, the second, first and second year, but after that, nobody remembers it. Um, and one of the uh, veterans at the Capitol said, you know, to me, this whole idea of raising sales taxes to pay for uh, you know, buying down property taxes, it sounds a whole lot like when Governor Richards said, that Ann Richards had said that the lottery would pay for what? Public education. Public education. Going, right, and, and that didn't happen either, right? So any way you look at it, it would be a tax increase, I mean, just objectively. Um, and so here we are. If somebody uh, said to me, Scott, is this bizarro world where we have Republican leadership in Texas offering uh, the chance for Texans to maybe this fall vote on whether or not they would like to raise taxes on themselves? Yeah, I mean, it, so a little bit of a meltdown. It makes it, it. I mean, there's so many questions that I have about this yeah. that I know you can't answer because I because there's nothing. Well, but there's there's nothing <laughs> out there right now that that would do. I mean, uh, so let's say that they were able to produce property tax relief. Are you really getting proper? Are you really getting taxes down when you're already adding an extra one percent of sales tax? And then on top of that, um, you know, and the other thing that surprised me is I keep getting yelled at for using the term cap on taxes because they're, yeah. what they're wanting to do is is they keep telling me, no, it's a rollback rate. It's not a cap. But but what they're wanting the counties and, and the, the cities to do is is not go over this amount so that there's no election. But right. the governor himself actually said that we have to put a cap on yep. school taxes. And he yep. used the word cap. Yes, and so did the lieutenant governor, uh, Dan Patrick, uh, on KFYO yesterday on the Chad Hasty show. I hate to keep giving tra uh, Chad so much credit, but he gets all those interviews, doesn't yeah, he? Just, um, <laughs> yeah, Chad, well, quit, quit it, that, dang it. it, it, it well, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> to his credit, he came down to Austin. It's great yeah. to see him down here and get so many interviews. But, uh, look, uh, you know, uh, the lieutenant governor said it himself. He said we need to cap, you know, what uh, the so, amount of uh, revenue that school districts are bringing in. It was very interesting. Uh, in that interview uh, that the lieutenant governor uh, said that the school districts would be coming out of the Senate's property tax plan. Remember, uh, Chairman Dustin Burroughs, Lubbock's own, uh, had been, uh, you know, sort of criticized um, in the past couple of weeks for taking the school districts out of the House version of the property tax cap plan. Um, and, you know, it's conservatives who are saying that uh, that basically, quote, unquote, guts the bill, yeah. uh, because when you get your property tax bill, what's the biggest line item in that thing? It's your independent school district. And so if they're not capping them, then where's the real property tax relief? Well, the House leadership says that it's in the school finance plan 
uh, because they are using um, you know uh, billions of dollars in that plan to buy down property taxes. So, uh, and, and, but and and that's a four cent buy down. Uh, so if you've got uh, you know a, a dollar, uh, you know if you're at a dollar in your school district for your property taxes, it would take you down to ninety six cents. But then the question is, will that be washed out by rising appraisals over the next couple of years? And the answer is probably yes. Yeah, absolutely it will. <laughs> <laughs> unless, sure. unless something happens to the economy, and then that's right. not a and good thing that. either. Right, uh, and, but, and that's the thing with property taxes is uh, no one would. Here's here's the great conundrum: nobody likes to see their property tax bill go up. No one, no one wants that. Um, but but people would also not want the value of their home to go down so, either. Right? So so so, so that's that's where they're trying to figure this out. They're bringing up uh, one of the things they're bringing up right now is that. The um, if they don't do it this way, then the courts may go against them again with mm-hmm. schools. Is, yes, sir. I mean, is that a real problem, or is this something that they're saying just because I know in the past they've had these court decisions that have forced yes. them to change things? So, is this something that maybe they're using as an excuse to, so that they don't have to put it all together, or is this a real problem that they're worried about? It's a real issue. Um, you know, I think that it's interesting. This is the first time that we have seen in modern times that uh, legislatures trying to, quote-unquote, fix school finance when they are not under a court order. Previously, when they would be working on a school finance plan, it was because the courts had found that the school finance system was unconstitutional, that there wasn't equity across the system, The kids all across Texas were not getting an equal education, uh, basically. Uh, and so um, in this instance, they are trying to stave off a court challenge, uh, and I think it's a valid concern, um, although, um, and by the way, uh, Speaker Bonin said earlier in the week that if the uh, school finance plan as passed by the House, if that becomes law, he thinks that we're good for about 10 years, that we would not see another court challenge. Um, but it's kind of a tradition that this is the way we do school finance in Texas, that the legislature passes something, the school districts sue because they say it's not equitable, a judge will uh, agree with the school districts, uh, and then the state Supreme Court would agree with the school districts, um, and then wash, rinse, repeat, right? So right. We, we just keep doing this over and over again, uh, and that's the way it's been litigated throughout the year. So, um, you know, whether there's a court challenge or not, I, I think it, to your point, I think it could be used as an excuse, although I think the way that the uh, Supreme Court ruled on this last time that it was litigated in the court, Courts, uh, you know, the state Supreme Court, and it's all Republicans on that court, by the way, they said uh, that the school system, the school finance system, is awful but lawful, that it yeah. is constitutional, yeah. but that the lawmakers in Austin need to do a much better job. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the <laughs> but so maybe they're trying to fix that, I guess. I, I don't sure, know. Sure, I mean. So mm-hmm. the, my question, uh, I know that you don't like to do predictions, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. let you do uh, oh, chances. Chances of okay, right. okay. us actually seeing any property tax relief at all, or any type of property uh, uh, rollback rates. Well, it's interesting. I'm. I think the betting line is. I'll do it that way. Uh-huh. I think the betting line is during the uh, during the uh, regular session that it very well may not happen. Um, you know, uh, was <laughs> you're not going to use with... the S word, are you? Uh, the S word. Oh well, <laughs> I I'll let you use it. <laughs> Special. You want to ask me the Man, question? I'll if, tell you. If, I'll tell you, uh, we we had we've had some people on that, uh, yeah. and they do not like the word special session down there in Austin. No, they don't. And and here's the thing: um, I don't mind if there's a special session. Um, you know, it's good for my business. People right. like hearing about what's going on. Uh, but uh, but look, for the lawmakers, you know, I mean, I do sympathize. They don't want to be away from their families. We have a part time legislature, and all these folks have real jobs to go back to, and businesses to you know, businesses to run, and everything like that. Um, here here's the real challenge, though, with a special session. It doesn't seem right now that the governor has a clear plan for what he wants to do about property taxes. Well, I mean, and I think and the that from the be- that, mm-hmm. I think that that's been the problem from the beginning. You've got yes, this sir. two and a half percent right. uh, rollback rate, but other than that, there was no plan there. And right now, it's all falling apart, and they're chasing their tails because they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan, and the thing about the 2.5 percent rollback uh, rate is, and you know, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but we've been talking about it all along. It doesn't cut your taxes. And when you're going into, and the politics of it, when you're going into an election year uh, like 2020, where Republicans across the state are going to have the wind, you know, uh, they've got serious headwinds they're facing because of President Trump at the top of the ticket and backlash to him. We saw a lot of that in the 2018 election and the way that those results came out. Um, if you're talking about taxes and you're a politician running for reelection, the only thing you'd like to be able to say is, I cut them. 
when you get into all this other stuff about rollback rates and we're going to do a tax swap, you know, where you could increase your sales taxes to try to buy down your property taxes, that's all too complicated. It doesn't stick on, you know, it doesn't go on a bumper sticker. Yeah. And so I think earlier in the week, you know, unfortunately for the Republican leadership, um, earlier in the week when they said we're going to, uh, you know, put it out for the voters to decide whether they want to do a tax increase on themselves. The Democratic Party was jumping up and down. Uh, yeah. They were excited about that because it's a great campaign for issue for them uh, coming up in the next November election when they're going to be arguing that uh, Republican leadership wanted to raise your taxes. And who would have thought when we started this session that that's what the discussion would be anything close to? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I understand there's there's ups and downs with all that. And, and they're trying oh, yeah. to they, I mean, they've got they're trying to fix one problem by making mm-hmm. another. But. Um, yeah. uh, in the end, it's it's just going to be interesting to see where this ends up because I think there's a lot of fights to come. Uh, Scott, we're we're running out of time. What do you have on the Quorum Report right now? Well, we'll be following what, you know what's happening with uh, this situation as it uh, unfolds. I mean, they're going to be coming back on Monday uh, supposedly to try to uh, you know address this property tax situation, which they were all set to do yesterday. I was talking with some uh, insiders yesterday who felt like you know what maybe on Monday they'll have to postpone this whole thing again because they don't have the votes for this and to be surprising the members uh, of the legislature with a completely new proposal uh, on the afternoon uh, that you're going to be voting on it uh, is not the way to get this done. So we've got all the the breakdown there for you uh, at quorumreport.com, and uh, we'll cover everything else that's happening at your Texas legislature there, uh, including uh, the speaker and uh, his uh, blow-up with some of these gun rights activists, uh, which uh, you know we'll talk about it some other time. I, I, I would say... Uh, the bill that those guys want to get passed is very, very dead. You can check it all out. <laughs> at, you know it's what I'm talking about. Back. At, mm-hmm, no, uh, you can check it all out at quorumreport.com and sign up for our free emails at quorumreport.com. Thank y'all. All right, thanks, Scott. And I'll talk to you next week. Look forward to it.